Hi guys, welcome to another lecture and today we'll be discussing something about galactosemia. Uh, before I begin, I would like to request you to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And these are the links to my social media handles. So make sure you follow me there. I post informative content and questions every day. So I hope, uh, you know, it will be, be useful to you. Uh, also, if you want to download my app, if you are, uh, you know, if you are interested in pediatrics, if you are a PG in pediatrics, if you are planning to read pediatrics, please make sure you download my app. Uh, links are in the description below. So galactosemia, galactosemia is an autosomal recessive abnormality. Galactosemia is a autosomal recessive abnormality that is, uh, you know, one of the most common metabolic abnormality that presents in the first few weeks of life. Now, uh, see this galactose is actually in the beta D galactose form. Okay, it is uh, when, when it is, you know, taken from the lactose, this it is in the beta D galactose form and it is converted into uh, alpha D galactose, alpha D galactose by the enzyme galactose, galactose muta rotis. Okay, so it is converted into beta, uh, it is converted from beta D galactose to alpha D galactose. And it is converted by the galactose muta rotis. Now this beta D galactose, this, uh, sorry, alpha D galactose, alpha D galactose gets converted into galactose 1-phosphate. Galactose 1-phosphate by an enzyme known as galactokinase. Okay. And this galactose 1-phosphate, this galactose 1-phosphate gets converted into UDP galactose. Okay, UDP galactose by an enzyme known as GPUT. Okay, galactose 1-phosphouridyl transferase. Okay, GPUT. The enzyme name is GPUT. It converts it into UDP galactose. And as UDP galactose gets converted into UDP glucose. UDP glucose by the enzyme epimerase. Galactose epimerase, not glucose epimerase, galactose epimerase. Okay, and this UDP glucose gets converted into glucose. So this is the cycle through which the galactose gets converted into glucose. Now, essentially, there are four types of galactosemia. There are four types of galactosemia. So type 1, type 2, type 3. And type 4. So type, there are four types of galactosemia. In the type 1, there is deficiency of, there, there is, it is the most common or it is also known as the classical, uh, uh, you know, galactosemia. It is the deficiency of GPUT enzyme. Okay, GPUT. Galactose, uh, galactose phosphate uridyl transferase enzyme deficiency is there and it is also known as the GALT deficiency. And it is the no, it, it is the most common form. It is the classical galactosemia. Okay. Next, the type 2 is the deficiency of galactokinase enzyme. It is a deficiency of galactokinase enzyme and it is also known as the GOLC deficiency. GOLC deficiency. Okay. Type 3. Type 3 is the deficiency of, uh, you know, galactose epimerase. Galactose epi Mares and it is known as gale deficiency. And the last one is deficiency of the one enzyme that is pending is mutarotase. Mutarotase. And it is known as the galm deficiency. Okay, so there are these four variants of galactosemia are commonly seen. And uh, you know, as you can see uh, in this image, in this image, I'll just label it for you. Galactomutarotase is type 4 galactosemia. Galactokinase deficiency is type 2 galactosemia. GPUT is the type 1 galactosemia. And epimerase is the type 3 galactosemia. So I hope you understood this procedure and this image is extremely clear to you. Okay. So for uh, the difference between all these variants is the clinical features and the classical or the, you know, GALK. GALT deficiency, uh, no, GALT deficiency, GALT or GPUT, GPUT deficiency or the type 1, it is the most severe and it begins with poor feeding in the neonatal age. 
there is hypotonia there is cerebral edema there is hypatomegaly there is seizures there is bleeding okay there is ascites there is gram negative sepsis most commonly e coli e coli sepsis is seen and oil drop cat oil droplet uh, you know the nuclear cataract is commonly seen in the patient of gout and usually the average life span is up to 3 years so uh, you know this classical variant presents within 3 years of age and the first time the patient will get admitted to you within the age of 3 years uh, the type 2 or the galactokinase gallic deficiency type 2 galactokinase is uh, it has only isolated cataract isolated cataract now why there will be a cataract in a patient of galactosemia so it is very important that in this image this alpha d galactose gets converted into galactosol galactosol and this galactosol causes the damage to the eye and it is the reason why cataracts happen in pediatric or in the eye uh, in any adult pediatric patient okay so this is important next is gale type 3 Uh, type two, type three. Okay, type three uh, is either asymptomatic or mild to moderate disease. Okay, mild to moderate disease. And type four. Now, type four is again very important because it has a pathognomonic features. Okay, it has a pathognomonic feature like cataract or cholestasis. There is, there is cholestasis. now in all the patients in all the patients there is one thing that i need to gain your attention to is hypergonadotropic hypergonadotropic hypo gonadism now this is what occurs now what is the meaning of hypergonadotropic hypogonadism is that there is decrease uh, sorry there is increase in lh and fsh the central stimulation is increased but there is decrease in the sex hormones because there is primary damage of the gonads the testes or the ovaries are primarily damaged so central supply or the central signaling is normal but uh, you know the patient has you know the abnormality in the uh, uh, you know the sex hormones okay what are the investigations you can go for rbc galactose rbc galactose estimation or the specific enzyme like if it is galt galm any uh, enzyme estimation you can go for and in newborn screening or dried blood spot the dried blood spot or the newborn screening test which is done by tandem mass spectrometry this obviously has the provision of diagnosis galactosemia uh many of the western countries like us uk might have they have actually the newborn universal newborn screening program in which you know some diseases which are common like cystic fibrosis like congenital atrial hyperplasia like the metabolic abnormalities galactosemia methyl malonic aciduria all that are diagnosed at the uh, you know the birth okay so that is very very important uh, how will you manage the patient so manage manage rvs stabilize the patient and stop all sources of lactose stop all sources of lactose like because lactose gets converted into glucose galactose so milk feeding should be stopped the patient should be kept on soy based soy based uh, uh, you know the soy based feeding soy based feeding should be uh, give, uh, given the feeds that are soy based uh, there are multiple brands in the private like you know isomel or probasi all this are the uh, soy based and all the derivatives of milk like paneer ghee uh, uh, you know the hydrolyzed whey protein or chocolates or any sweets made out of milk all that should be avoided life long okay so that is the important thing you need to go for uh, refer to ophthalmologist uh, check out for the you know ophthalmic complications and please uh, you know the puberty management and the uh, the uh you know all the development should be normal because this has multiple abnormalities as you can see and multiple organs are involved that's all for today guys i hope you learned something new